Franconian region of the Kingdom of Bavaria in the German Confederation. He was born as the youngest child into a rather large family, as he had three older sisters and three older brothers. Most of Levi's siblings came from his father's first marriage, but she had died in 1822. He later remarried to Levi's mother, Mathild Baumann Strauss. The Strauss family would ultimately decide to move to the United States from their homeland because of a few reasons. One reason was that religious persecution of people of the Jewish faith was common in Bavaria. So there were only a few certain areas where they could live and were charged a special tax because of their religion. Another reason the Strausses moved to the United States was because of the death of Levi's father to tuberculosis at the age of 16, which made it easier for the family to move from Bavaria. Another reason the Strauss family moved to the United States was because they already had family ties in New York. Levi's two older brothers, Jonas and Louis, had established a dry goods store in New York City. But Levi wouldn't stay in New York for long, as he set out in 1853 to San Francisco with his brother-in-law David Stern to expand his brother's dry goods business, but changed the name to Levi Strauss and Company. There was much competition in the West, so Levi had to make a name for himself and his business to differentiate him from the rest of the general stores in San Francisco. Jacob Davis, a customer of Levi's, wrote a letter to him in 1872 and gauged his interest in becoming a business partner with him in order to get a patent for his product. In the letter, he described that he had developed a unique way to make his heavy cotton work pants more durable. He had hammered rivets at the pockets, where there is a lot of strain in order to make the pants last longer and less likely to tear. The patent was granted to Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss Company on May 20, 1863. Their waist overalls were a real success with the miners, farmers, and lumberjacks in the San Francisco area. Levi's blue jeans hadn't always been the household name we know today, as there was a refined market for them. Initially, the only people who really bought the jeans were hard laborers, which made sense as they were made with that purpose in mind. But it wasn't until Western culture started to become assimilated into Eastern culture that blue jeans started to gain recognition in the East Coast. When people from the East Coast started coming over to the West Coast to vacation and see their way of life, they would see these working men in their jeans and either buy a pair or spread the word. Ultimately, Levi wouldn't get to see his blue jeans spread not only across the U.S., but also across the globe. He died on September 26, 1902 at the age of 73. He left behind his company to his four nephews, Jacob, Sigmund, Louis, and Abraham Stern. A new market had presented itself about 40 years after Levi had died. Clothing for the defense men of the United States. This was undoubtedly big for the company. But blue jeans hadn't become the big success that we know today. That wasn't until youth countercultures of the 1950s to the 1980s. These countercultures who wore the jeans were groups known as greasers and hippies in the U.S. Transitioning to the 1990s, the company was under a lot of fire for the way they treated their Chinese employees. They were cited for sub-minimum wages. Seven-day work weeks with 12-hour shifts, and poor living conditions. They were then forced to pay one of the heftiest fines in U.S. labor history, 
sitting at $9 million paid out to an estimated 1,200 employees. Transitioning into the 2000s, Levi's had closed their Valencia Street plant located in San Francisco, which had been there following the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. One year later, they had closed their last American factory, located in San Antonio, Texas. This would mark the end of an era, as Levi jeans had been produced in the United States for 150 years. But shortly after the last factory closed, a new factory that exclusively made higher-end, more expensive jeans opened up in the United States.